Let's take a quick look at what we can do around displaying some kind of UI while our application is loading. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this, really, because what I've got here is just a standard Silverlight project and a hosting web project. And if we were to build this Silverlight project, let's just go build it, and the UI is very simple. All we have on the screen is a button that doesn't do anything. So if we press F5, the size of this app is going to be pretty small, and so it loads pretty much instantly. So one way in order to make sure that your um, application is on the screen and gives the user something to look at quickly is to make a small zap in the first place. And if you make a small zap, you can then dynamically load things like videos and images and so on after you've got the application on the screen. So that's one way of making sure your application is immediately available to a user. Sometimes, though, you might have a larger zap and you might want to display something whilst that zap is loading. So let me artificially expand the size of my zap here by adding an existing item to it and what I'll do is embed a, a video file in it. So I'll just go and find myself one of these Silverlight videos that I'm making um, and talking to you with right now. Let's find one that's reasonably large. Uh, we'll just pop into this Outputs folder and find something say to do with storyboards. That's a reasonably large WMV file, and what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to embed it as content inside my zap, and we'll copy it if it's newer. So what that means is my zap has just become a lot bigger. Let's go build. Let's go um, press F5, and we should see a bit of a visible lag whilst we download that zap. So let's just press F5. We've now got a much bigger Silverlight application. Oh, a bit of a lag while we do it. Now, of course, we're going to cache that now, which is um, a problem of trying to demonstrate this to you, but we have made this whole process a little bit slower. So whilst that's happening, we can actually display a custom XAML-based splash screen. So what we can do is add to our website here. Let's go ahead and add a new item. I'll call it an XML file. So we'll just say um, XML file, and we'll, have, we'll call it splash.xaml. We'll add that in. And we get an XML file, and let's just start off building a little piece of XAML in here. So what I'll do is I'll just paste in a piece of XAML that gives me a grid, and you can see that grid is going to be red. And this is called splash.xaml. Now let's go to the HTML page, which is hosting our Silverlight content, and find the function that creates the Silverlight player. So here we are with the object tag. And we can add an additional parameter to this. The name is splash screen source. And our value can be splash.xaml. XAML. OK, let's um, add that in. Let's save that. Let's press F5 and see if we see that red piece of UI appear. There it is before we get our button. So we can see we've added a little bit of custom UI before we get this thing. Now, there's a little bit more that we can do. Um, we can't just set the source like this. It, it kind of looks a bit um, poor at the moment. And all that we're getting is a red rectangle. Let's go back to our XAML. We could add some custom UI onto this. Now, you need to like, take a little bit of care that what you use from your splash.xaml file is actually part of the Silverlight runtime. That is, it's not packaged in some other assembly that needs to be downloaded by your application before um, you're actually loading that application. So this thing runs before your application shows up. So anything that's not in the core Silverlight runtime is not going to work in this file. But we can use a grid here, and let's also put into this something like a text block. I'll just paste in a text block here, and we've got a text block, it's called My Text, and at the moment it has some text on it that's not set. Now the reason for me putting in a text block is that we can actually set the value of something like a text block, or we can control an animation, or whatever it might be. I'm just using the text block here purely as an example, because it would be more common to perhaps to control an animation. But we can set it as progress moves on in downloading your application. So if you go back to our um, our hosting page, we've got some other parameters that we can set for this splash screen. The first one is a parameter called on source download progress changed. And we'll give it a value of a function in JavaScript. So we'll say on source download progress changed. Let's go write a function in JavaScript for that. So we'll just pop up to our script block up here and we'll say function on source download progress changed. And kind of like a .NET event handler, you get a sender and you get event args on that thing. Now what we can do is we can use the control that's the sender here. So we can say sender.findName. We want it to find, I think we called our text block my text so we say my text and we want to set dot text to be equal to and 
we can say something like download progress is brackets plus args dot progress plus brackets, something like that. We're just trying to output onto that text block how much progress we've made in downloading. Let's see if we can press F5 and see what that does for us, if anything. So hopefully you saw some pretty speedy progress there. Um, let me just see if I can clear my internet cache for a second. Let's just go and um, get rid of my uh, temporary files. Let's close this off and see if we can make this slower so you can just catch that a little bit more. Okay, so let's just um, press F5 on this. You can see a little bit more download. It's pretty quick. If you had a bigger zap, you're going to see a little bit more from that. But um, now we've cached it, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty quick. But you saw that there was progress going by. That progress was reported as a value between 1 and 0. You could easily multiply that up and turn it into a percentage and so on. But it's probably more likely that you just use it to control something like an animation. But there's one other parameter that we can add here. We can say um, param name equals on source download complete value equals on source download complete and we can write another javascript function up here and we'll just go and write a function on source download complete sender and args again and we could go and say something like let's just copy that piece of code from there equals done or something like that Let's see if we can even see that happening. I doubt that we can in the um, in the scheme of things here. I didn't catch that happening. Um, maybe what we could do is set a breakpoint in it from a script perspective. Let's just go and change our project so that we do debugging ASP.NET uh, rather than Silverlight. So let's let's turn turn off Silverlight debugging there and see if we can set a script breakpoint to see if that actually occurs at the end of this. See if we even get that call. Yeah, so you can see we are actually getting the call. It's just that um, it's going too fast for us to be able to see visually. So just a bit of information, really, that we can use a custom splash screen. The object tag allows us to hook into the splash screen source, progress change, download complete. Most commonly, and you'll see this with a lot of Silverlight applications, especially those that come from, say, Silverlight streaming, you'll see a little animation with a value that ticks up saying 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 or counts down from 100 or whatever it might be to indicate how long you're going to wait for the rest of the application to load and that's pretty easy to build here um, given that we can find out how far along the uh, the process we are in loading the application and put that into our own custom splash screen just like we've seen here mm -hmm.